So talk to me about kind of your transition now and where you are years later and compare it to Eric, who was fired in 2017 and what you thought recession proofing was in 2017 before you were fired and what you think recession proofing is now. Yeah. So it was simple, right? Then not simple, but you know, once you take the purple pill or however you get that shift in mindset when it comes to assets first liabilities, because that was what had me punching the steering wheel in my car during the commute. Like, oh my God, I've been a fool all this time thinking that my primary residence was an asset. It's not making me money. I get it now. So that was the simple path. But then once that path, that first step was taken, I had no idea all the requirements it would take to be a seller entrepreneur in terms of now you have to build a network. You have to build your reputation and your brand. You have to start putting yourself out there through content. You have to start getting on podcasts. You start to have blogs. You have to start doing things that aren't necessarily inherent to any of us, but it's an absolute necessity when it comes to building a business now, every business, whether you're selling shoes or you're, you're a pizza shop, whatever it is, you have to have a presence on social media and treat it as such. You have to have a company basically inside of your company that is a social media marketing engine. Whether you hire them out or you build one yourself, you have to now recognize and appreciate and understand that is what is necessary to survive in this day and age. I think it's amazing, you know, and I've lived this journey that you're talking about how difficult it is to to build a personal brand. You know, Pablo knows this about me for the last two years, I went about really being a little bit more vocal on social and a whole lot of trainings that I did. And, and it was really, really, really difficult. And I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I do now with the show and with our group and all that good stuff. We've really figured some things out, but it took two years for me to figure it out. So to have Podmax there to kind of help for those to kind of build that, that brand up and to do it from somebody who has been down that path makes it really easy is really, really exciting for somebody like myself. And I know for other people in the audience as well. But I think the bigger thing here is just that, you know, this brand, it might scare some people, right? Like, I, you know, if you asked me two years ago, did I think that I needed to have a personal brand? Well, probably no, but things have changed, right? And I would go back to when I used to work at J&J and I used to think that I was, I had security because I worked for a big corporation, right? That was not realistic, right? We know how that all works out. It's worked out that way for me. It worked out that way for Eric. I'm sure for many of you on the call, it's worked out, you know, to not be as secure as you thought. But something that somebody cannot take away from you, no matter what happens to your job, no matter what happens in the economy, is you being a thought leader. And to whatever degree you're going to do that, maybe it's working with PodMax. I mean, that would be a great idea. But whatever you do, it might be something much less intense, right? It might be you writing a blog. It might be you writing an email to 10 people who think that you know exactly what you're talking about. That's really recession proofing. In addition to the real assets, you guys know I love rental properties, but this has been a really big mindset shift for me talking about what real recession proofing is. Yeah, because recession proofing has many parallels and this is one of them. One of the critical components to recession proofing is always paying attention to your brand, your message, and the value that you're providing regardless of the economy, right? So right now I'm talking a lot about mindset. Why? Because a lot of people are feeling down. They're feeling like there's no answers during all of this. So you have to sort of be mindful of what's happening and shift your content if necessary like Greg is saying, you know, now is a great time to still continue and trust that real estate is a perfect vehicle, regardless of what's happening, because we've been through these times before we've seen it happen. There maybe needs to be a shift in different types of vehicles within real estate, you know, whether it's private lending, there's always going to be people doing deals. There's ways that you could still get involved, but still get involved. And then the, the, the other layer that I was talking about is sharing what you're doing. So if it's private lending, if it's analyzing deals, putting yourself out there in terms of, okay, what I'm saying here, it can help someone. There's someone out there in my network within arm's length that I can help 
if they want to get to this because they're searching for answers too. So just find that vehicle, find the, the platform. And if it's not video, I mean, video is really powerful. That's hence why we're all here. And, but if blogging is more comfortable for you and you're a good writer or you need to hire a writer or show it to someone that is a writer and say, hey, would you mind taking a few moments to just massage this for me? Because I'm going to put this up as a post. So there's ways to do it. You just have to figure it out or reach out to people who probably know the answers and start to leverage their expertise.